Hey, it's Freiberger here from Roadkill and Engine Masters, and I'm about to show you a sample episode of this How to Build Your First Engine series that we've been doing on Motor Trend On Demand. It's me and Steve Dulcich showing you just basics of assembling your very first engine. We're doing them every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on MotorTrendOnDemand.com. Here's a sample episode. <laughs> This time you're gonna learn all about an engine's compression ratio, what it does for you, and how to calculate it or how to affect it. I'm Freiberger, this is Roadkill Extra, and we've been doing a whole bunch of stuff with this small block Chrysler engine that's gonna end up in one of our project cars for Roadkill Garage. And this one is gonna be a little bit different of an installment than the rest that we've done because it's not really a succinct how-to, hands-on stuff. Instead, there's gonna be some theory here and explanation about compression ratio. We're gonna talk about what it is, how it affects performance, and how you can change it, or the things in your engine that affect it. So, let's start with what is compression ratio? Basically, it is the volume of a cylinder with the piston at bottom dead center, compared to the volume of the cylinder with a piston at top dead center. So, let's look at my handy dandy drawing right here. So, what we've got here is the engine cylinder. That's this, right here the circle where the pistons go up and down. And up here, indicated by this dotted line, I've got the chamber in the cylinder head, which is this right here. Obviously the cylinder head bolts to the top of the engine and this chamber caps off the cylinder where the piston's moving up and down. So right here, I've got the piston at bottom dead center. And so I'm looking at the volume of all of this in here is air, or in fact, it's air-fuel ratio. You've got a bunch of gasoline and air all floating around inside here. Now, let's look at the same thing with the piston at top dead center. It's taken all of this air, all of this area, and it squeezed it, compressed it, compression ratio, and moved it so that all of these molecules are now crammed in really tight in this small space. So what we're looking at again is compression ratio is all of this volume divided by this smaller volume. Again, piston at bottom dead center versus piston at top dead center. So that's what compression ratio is. But why would it make power if you were to increase your compression ratio or decrease it? Well, decreasing compression tends to hurt performance, almost always. Increasing compression ratio up to the point of where you've got detonation, which can be an issue with a high compression ratio, Increasing compression ratio tends to improve power. Why? Well, it again has to do with all of these happy air-fuel ratio molecules cruis cruising around inside your cylinder. If you have a low compression ratio, it is not squeezing the molecules together as much as a high compression ratio. So imagine you've got a really high compression ratio, say 15 to one, that's big. It is cramming all that air into that little chamber and all of those molecules are getting closer and closer and closer. And what that means is when the spark plug goes off and it ignites the explosion, all those molecules can hand the fire off to the next one much quicker and much more violently than they would with a lower compression ratio that isn't stuffing those molecules together as much. So again, it's the density of air and fuel crammed into the chamber that makes more power with a higher compression ratio than it does with a lower compression ratio. So what are typical compression ratios? Well, a smog engine from the 70s can have a hideously low compression ratio like seven and a half to one. That's horrible. Eight and a half to one, also horrible. Getting into a street performance engine, you're looking at between 10 and 11 to one. 10 and a half to one's a real happy medium. And then I call like 12 and a half to one compression ratio no man's land because at that point, you typically need to run race gasoline. Whereas at 10 and a half to one, depending on the camshaft you're using, you can typically run regular pump gas. So at 12 and a half to one, if you've got to buy race gas, you might as well have 14 and a half to one. Go big. So that's kind of the basics of what compression ratio is, how it affects your power. Now let's talk about the elements in the engine that affect the compression ratio. So basically, it's gonna be this. Anything that you do to increase the volume of the cylinder with the piston at bottom dead center will increase compression ratio because you're taking a bigger area and cramming it 
still into the same size chamber. Conversely, anything that you can do to make the chamber smaller will increase compression ratio because again, you're making a smaller space for the piston to cram all that air into. So once again, larger down here means higher compression, smaller up here means higher compression. Now let's talk specifics. The elements that can affect compression ratio or the elements that do affect compression ratio are displacement. Again, this area right here, it's affected by the cylinder bore. How big or round is this hole? Bigger means more displacement. How long is the stroke? Stroke is how far up and down the piston travels in the cylinder. So a larger bore increases displacement and increases compression ratio. A longer stroke increases displacement and increases compression ratio. The next thing is the piston configuration. Here's the piston that we've got going on in our small block Chrysler. It is a Molly forged piston, and it has two valve reliefs in it here, which are depressed into the face of the piston. They give room for the valves to open and close. So this would be known as a dish. This one is five cc's of volume. So if you were to cap this off with a, a glass plate and measure just the volume of liquid that would fit inside this hole, it would be five cc's. Now, because that's a dish, it reduces compression ratio because Imagine the piston up here at top dead center. Once again, this is your chamber size. But if there's a hole in this piston that's down here, that is increasing the total size of the chamber with the piston at top dead center. Conversely, if this piston instead had a dome on it like this, which makes me much happier, you can see that that dome is now reducing the size of this chamber and making the thing have more compression. I'm so good fire alarms are going off. Okay, where was I? Piston configuration. The next thing about the piston that you need to know is the deck height. So deck height is at top dead center, how the piston is in relation to the deck surface, which is where the cylinder head bolts on. We call it at negative deck height if the piston is down in the hole, say, 50 thousandths of an inch, and it's positive if the piston is coming up above the deck at all. So here's how that affects compression. Basically, here's the piston at top dead center. Well, if the piston is down here at top dead center, then this hole chamber is bigger. If the piston is way up here at top dead center, it makes the chamber smaller. So again, if the piston is below the deck surface, you have lower compression. If it is even with the deck surface, that's about perfect, and it's higher, then you can run into some mechanical problems, but it also increases compression ratio. The next thing that is discussed sometimes is crevice area, and basically that is the, the crack that you see right here, the distance between the piston and the cylinder wall and above the top ring. A lot of people think that that's critical for compression ratio calculations. Honestly, I leave that out, but on some of the calculators that you'll see, it will include the volume of that little crack all the way around there from the ring up, but don't worry about that. The next thing you do need to worry about though is your head gasket. So the head gasket bolts between the cylinder head and the engine block. So it's basically a spacer between the block and the cylinder head. So there's two elements of this that affect compression. One is the size of the bore in the gasket. As an example, this has a 4.180 inch gasket bore. Gasket bore is what that is known as. And the cylinder itself is only 4.04. .04. So since the gasket is this big and the cylinder is this big, it creates a little bit of area in there, which creates more volume with the piston at top dead center, which reduces compression ratio. Ideally, a performance gasket would be almost exactly the size of the bore itself so that you're not creating that little gap between the deck and the cylinder head, which can also lead to problems. But it is very typical to have it bigger. The second thing that will affect your head gasket on compression 
perfect compression with your head gasket, is what's known as compressed thickness. When it's all bolted together, how thick is this gasket? Again, look at it as a spacer between the block and the cylinder head, and you can see if the piston's only coming up to right here, that if you make the gasket thicker, you're increasing the volume of that chamber when the piston's up at top dead center, therefore a thicker gasket reduces your compression ratio. This happens to be 39 thousandths of an inch when it is all crushed. If it was thicker, I'd have a lower compression ratio. If it was thinner, I'd have a higher compression ratio. Next thing is chamber size. So this is the cylinder head and this is the combustion chamber. It's where the intake and exhaust valves are. Now you can see if I put my hand over this, that this is all recessed. It's like a heart-shaped bathtub in here. This particular Edelbrock aluminum small block Chrysler cylinder head has a 63 cc chamber. Uh, a smog head on a small block Chevy has a 76 cc chamber. A big block Chevy can have like 120 cc's of combustion chamber, but it doesn't matter because the big block has more displacement. So anytime that you take this chamber and make it smaller, you're going to increase compression ratio. And anytime you make it larger, you're going to reduce compression ratio. So I just run through all the elements that you need to know to calculate your compression ratio. And I'm going to blast through them very quickly again, because to do this, you need to go online and just Google compression ratio calculator. And if the calculator doesn't ask you for everything that I'm about to tell you, it's not good enough. These are the elements that you need to be able to put in for an online compression ratio calculator to spit out your information. You're gonna need to know your bore, the diameter of your cylinders, in this case, 4.04. .04. You're gonna need to know your stroke. How far does the piston move up and down? In this case, 3.58. Those two things affect the displacement of that cylinder. And again, bigger, means higher compression, smaller means lower compression. Next, you need to know your piston configuration. The piston manufacturer will tell you the CC displacement of any dish or dome that's on the top of the piston. Next, you need to know your deck height. Go back to one of our other installments and you'll see us showing you how to use a deck bridge to determine what the relationship is between the top of the piston and the top of the deck to see if it's below deck or above deck. The calculator will ask for a negative number for a dish or below deck and a positive number for a dome or above deck. Next, I talked about the crevice area around here. Don't worry about that. Most calculators don't have it. Next, you do need to know your gasket bore and your gasket compressed thickness. Some calculators will instead ask you for a volume of displacement in here when the thing is crushed. Both of those pieces of information, or all three, the bore, the thickness, or the CC total volume, is available from the gasket manufacturer. It's usually on the package. Next, you need to know your chamber size in your cylinder head. That is available from the manufacturer of the cylinder head or if you've had a stock head milled, meaning material cut off of it, or if you've changed the valves, you may need to have a machine shop figure out what the total displacement is in cc's of your chamber. So those are all of the elements that you need to know. It was a lot, but if you go back and watch this and think about it and go to an online compression ratio calculator and put in all the data, you will get your number. And for this engine, we figured it all out. So the little 360 Mopar that's going in our Challenger, has 10.769 to one compression. And that makes us happy because that's right at the top of what we're gonna get away with with this camshaft on pump gas. Whew, that was a lot. If you need more Roadkill Extra, go sign up right now.